to the Web of Global Limited Q2 and H1 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Disha Shah from Ad Factors PR. Thank you and over to you, Ms. Disha. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Web of Global Limited Earning Conference Call for the quarter and half year ended 30th September 2023. Today, we have with us Mr. Sunil Agrawal, Managing Director, Mr. Nitin Panwad, Group CFO, and Mr. Prashant Paraswat, Head of Investor Relations. We will begin the call with opening remarks by Mr. Sunil Agrawal on the business operations, key initiatives, and a broad outlook followed by discussion on the financial performance by Mr. Nitin Panwar, after which the management will open the forum for Q&A session. Before we get started, I would like to point out that some statements made or discussed on today's call may be forward-looking in nature and must be viewed in conjunction with the risks and uncertainties that we face. A detailed statement and explanation of these risks is included in the earnings presentation, which has been shared with you all earlier. The company does not undertake to update these forward-looking statements publicly. I would now like to invite Mr. Sunil Agarwal to make his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Disha. I welcome you all to Web of Global's Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. I hope you have reviewed our results and the presentation that details our business operations and current market trends. Our financial performance in Q2 was in line with our guidance. At the group level, sales for the quarter were reduced 705 crores, showing an increase of 9.1% over the same quarter of the last financial year. Gross margins in Q2 FY24 came in at 61.4% of the revenue. Over the years, VGR has created a robust supply chain. We are the only company in our peer group that has its own manufacturing setup in addition to a global sourcing base. This vertically integrated supply chain has enabled us to consistently maintain gross margin above 60%. Better pricing and a focus on operational efficiency has enabled us to improve profitability margins during the quarter. A beta margin for the quarter was 9.5% of revenue versus 8.1% in Q2 FY23. In absolute terms, EBITDA was higher by 29% YOY, suggesting operating leverage. Let me now take you into each of our retail markets. In Germany, our proprietary teleshopping channel, ShopRT, will now be airing on HD channels in 13 million and 2 million households through Vodafone and Telecolumbus networks, respectively. With these distribution arrangements, Shoppers in Germany is now present in approximately 95% households, thus further strengthening our visibility and market share. We would like to reiterate that by H2 of FY25, we will be break even in Germany. Publicly available data suggests that broader macro challenges in the US have peaked out with a gradual rebound in consumer demand and confidence. The UK economy, however, grapples with an ongoing cost of living crisis, exacerbated by increased mortgages, rentals, and inflationary pressure. Nevertheless, our endeavor is to engage with our existing customers better, as well as expand our reach. Today, our broadcast coverage is approximately 139 million homes, which is approximately 4% higher. Q over Q. Furthermore, we have been streamlining our portfolio of branded products. In conjunction with our flagship umbrella brands, Edge, ShopRC, and PJC, our in house product brands help us gain customer loyalty while maintaining overall margins. Presently, revenue generated from these brand, branded products constitutes approximately 29% of overall B2C revenue. With the target increase is to 50% by FY27. 
This growth is expected to be achieved by integrating brands based on comprehensive metrics that consider factors such as price gathering, brand archetype, and unique offerings. Those are the four R's, that is widening reach, new customer registrations, customer retention, and repeat purchase. We name our key priorities for overall growth. The reach of our TV networks by the end of Q2 of four was approximately 139 million TV homes. We reached TV homes through cable, satellite, telco networks, and over the air antenna, also called OTA platforms. Our products are also available on digital channels, including proprietary websites, smartphone apps, OTT platforms, and marketplaces. New registrations in the trading 12 months period came in at 3.1 lakhs. Our customer retention rate stood at 37% on TTM basis, which is 40% of last year. Customers bought an average of 23 pieces on TTM basis. Our dedication to sustainability and community welfare continues to be our priority. I'm pleased to share that this quarter we touched the milestone of donating 81 million meals to school children since the inception of our midday meal program called Year Purchase Feeds. We serve approximately 46,000 meals every school day. This initiative aligns with our commitment to making a positive impact on the communities. During the second quarter, Shop TJC UK executed an asset purchase program agreement to acquire the assets of Ideal World, which, is, which includes its IP rights, broadcasting rights, studio equipment, and other intangible assets. The purchase consideration of the deal was 1.125 million pounds. Ideal World, through its proprietary TV shopping channel, is in the tele shopping and digital retail of lifestyle products. Ideal World is one of the major tele shopping brands in the UK with a legacy of over 21 years. We expect that this transition will create synergies and help us continue market leading growth. Further, we also acquired 100% equity of Mindful Source BD for a purchase consideration of 12.5 million euros. Incorporated in the Netherlands in 2018, Mindful Source mainly serves the United States, one of the largest e commerce markets, through its proprietary e commerce websites and marketplace. While more than 90% of revenue is derived from the US, it also has presence in the UK, EU, Canada, and Australia. It primarily serves subscription boxes comprising fashion jewelry, gemstone, and lifestyle products. The company's performance over the period has been robust, having achieved an annual turnover of Euro 18 million with a hefty PBT of uh, approximately 10% in 2022. We expect mindful source native digital abilities to allow us to strengthen our digital businesses and create synergies for mindful source through our deep sourcing and manufacturing abilities. Both acquisitions were funded through internal approvals reflecting the strength of our balance sheet and strong cash generating business model. We continue to reward our shareholders and despite major investments undertaken recently, the board has declared a second interim dividend for this financial year of rupees 1.5 per equity share. We look forward to maintaining this fine balance between growth investment and quarterly payout to generate sustainable value for our stakeholders. As I conclude, I would like to emphasize that over the period we have exhibited resilience in our performance. Thanks to our recent acquisitions, we are now revising, revising our guideline. In FR24, as the current financial year, we expect the top line to grow between 13 to 15 percent and in the high teens range in FR25 with decent operating leverage. We are confident in our business model value proposition and execution abilities. And hence, in the mid to long term, we expect to maintain revenue growth rate in the mid team range. With this, I now hand over the call to Nitin to discuss financial performance. Over to you, Nitin.
Thank you, Sunil. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Viva Global's Q2 FY24 earnings call. Our Q2 FY24 revenue reached rupees seven hundred and five crores, which showed year-over-year growth of nine point one percent. U.S. and U.K. sales in local currency terms were down by three point three percent and two point two percent, respectively. However, in constant currency terms, the group revenue has grown by four percent year-over-year. Germany continues to fare well with increased household penetration and customer outreach. Germany maintained its growth momentum and revenue grew by 62% year over year. Having achieved 95% of household penetration in Germany within two years of operation is increasing. We believe that these building blocks in place, we will be break even in Germany by H2 of FY25. In the current economic environment, we are still seeing that customer remain cautious about pricing and seeking out deals with lower spending on discretionary items. Keeping this trend in mind, we continue with our value-conscious product offering to match the customer demand, supported by our vertical integrated supply chain. During the quarter, our TV revenue has a growth of 2.3% year over year to rupees 406 crores. Additionally, our digital revenue witnessed a robust growth of 13% year over year to rupees 263 crores, underscoring our investment in digital platforms. TV revenue is attributed to 61% of our total retained revenue, with the remaining 39% attributable to digital platforms. TV includes customers accessing our products through our proprietary TV channels that are released via cable, satellite, and OT. Digital refers to online purchases on our own proprietary website, shopping apps, OTT platforms, and social media. Our core focus remains to encourage customers to transact on both TV and digital platforms, which gives them a unique shopping experience. Such omnichannel customers generate significantly higher lifetime value than customers that either buy only on TV or only digital. In our overall product mix, the revenue contribution from lifestyle products was at 27% in Q2 FY26, which has significantly increased from single digit level a few years back. This clearly demonstrates our ability to expand wallet share by entering existing categories over time. It is pertinent to note that lifestyle category has a growth at a gather of 31% during the last five years. Lifestyle products categories include home decor, fashion accessories, apparel, beauty products, etc. This trend has also balanced our revenue streams. Our budget free feature provides customers with the convenience of buying on EMI. During the quarter, the products sold via budget pay contribute 39% of total retail revenues. This feature has an added level of affordability for our customers. Gross margins in Q2 continue to remain strong at 61.4%. Profit before tax for the quarter is rupees 41 crores, which is higher by 31% year over year. 33% year. Our sustained efforts in operational efficiency and better pricing have enabled us to consistently improve our profit margins during the last few quarters. We are committed to sustaining this positive momentum and delivering consistent value to our stakeholders. Owing to improvement in profitability ratios and prudent financial management, ROCE and ROE have also improved marginally and are 16% and 10% respectively. Recently, we made two major acquisitions. The first acquisition pertains to execution of asset purchase agreement to acquire assets of Ideal World Limited, a major teleshipping brand in the UK with a brand legacy of over 21 years. I believe the combined synergies through an efficient and lean cost structure, we will able to continue our market leading growth in UK profitably. The second equation pertains to an e-commerce company, Mindful Souls a Dutch-based e-commerce company 
having field presence in US, UK, EU, Canada, and Australia. Its performance over the period has been robust, having achieved an annual turnover of 80 million euros with a healthy PBD margin of 10% in 2022 calendar year. We expect that this acquisition will allow cross-learning with huge growth potential in the digital segment for us, wherein we could also leverage our supply chain and sourcing capabilities. We remain cash accurate in each reporting period. During the half year ended 30th September 2023, operating and free cash flow stands at Rs 85 crore and 55 crore respectively. At the end of Q2, VGL remained net cash positive with a balance of rupees 26 crores after funding both of the equation internally. We strongly believe in creating value to our shareholders and are pleased to announce that the board of directors has approved a second annual dividend for the fiscal year of rupees 1.5 per equation. To conclude, we have demonstrated resilience and strength in our performance. We are confident in the business prospects ahead of us and will continue our growth trajectory with healthier margins in the long run. Having completed recent acquisition, we would like to revise our revenue guidance. As Sunil just mentioned, in the current financial year, we expect our revenue to grow between 13 to 15 percent and in the high team range in FI25 to decent operating range. Further, in mid to long term range, we are confident of maintaining a mid-team revenue group. With this, I hand over the call to moderator. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sriyansh J from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Shriyansh. Sir, congratulations on the two uh, acquisitions. Uh, my first question is, sir, pertaining to slide number 44, uh, where we are saying that uh, UK we see neutral con consumer sentiments and US we see gradual recovery. Uh, but when I look at your local currency, QOQ, uh, UK, in fact, has done better versus US. So just wanted some sense on uh, uh, what are the markets looking like individually? Can you repeat the question again? On slide 44, I was trying to open my presentation. Yeah. No, sir, in the slides, uh, we have mentioned that uh, UK continues to face uh, muted consumer sentiments. Uh, but uh, when you look at your QOQ number in local currency for UK, we've grown about 11 odd percent. Uh, whereas uh, US, we've seen uh, recovery. Uh, we have mentioned in the presentation, we've seen some recovery, but uh, those, uh, the number looks to be a tad weaker versus UK. So just wanted some sense on. Uh, so slide 44 is of the economy as such, not uh, regional groups numbers. So UK uh, from 30.9% uh, uh, ratio that UK had has gone down to 25%. There's a real e-com contribution for overall retail. And US slightly improving uh, to 15.5 from earlier 15 something percentage market share. So UK continues to face uh, overall macro challenges as well as e-com is facing more headwinds than overall overall retail. So uh, UK does uh, have over, uh, macro macro challenges, and in this environment, we bought uh, ideal world at a great value, and we believe that we can add substantial value to the regional group to this acquisition. 
and alone PJC itself will grow and uh, as per our guidance for next financial year. And within this financial year, we're giving guidance of 13 to 15 percent growth overall for the business with the acquisition. Now, without the acquisition, we'll continue to grow. Uh, we'll, we'll stay with our original guidance of 8 to 10 percent. With acquisition, it will be 13 to 15 percent growth combined at both units. Now, to your question, how does U.S. is uh, uh, economy was, is better than why we are not because in uh, economy as such U.S. is still doing a little bit better, but TV shopping has not done as well because people have moved out and they are spending more on experiences rather than products. Even on products, essentials they are buying, but discretionary spend is still a bit subdued. Uh, even the Amazon the recently declared their results, they share that the essentials they've done well, but discretionary has been a bit challenging for them as well. Oh, thanks a lot, sir, for the detailed uh, explanation. Uh, my second question is, sir, on the acquisitions. Uh, so we understand ID World uh, was already facing some issues, but uh, uh, Mindful Souls, uh, was, from what we understand, is Mindful Souls was doing really well and they were growing at uh, growth rates of upwards of 100%. So just wanted to understand the rationale for uh, this the promoter selling the company to Weber. So just... Yeah, so most of the many of the e-com companies, promoters, they uh, go from project to uh, uh, venture to venture. So they sold this venture to us along with the 42 people team and they went on to the next venture. So they have another venture of snacks or, or, or the crochet, the knitting and uh, the three other ventures story. So they sold the biggest venture and most successful venture to us, uh, got the cash and then they went on to uh, grow other ventures. So that is the environment in Western world like these uh, entrepreneurs or people come with the idea Go and then sell. All right. Uh, so my last and final question is on the balance sheet. So uh, when I look at your cash flow statement, uh, there has been some uh, decrease in other assets. But uh, when I'm looking at the balance sheets for this September versus March, whereas September last year, I don't see any uh, decrease in other assets, but there has actually been an increase. So that was one, and the second is we have seen an entry of gold uh, loan. So just wanted to understand even that uh, uh, number. So yes, uh, let me take this. So other asset is uh, long term deposits that we have. Uh, we have kept those deposits in US. So that deposits were redeemed. So that is why the uh, there is a movement in other assets. And uh, the other question is the uh, gold metal loan, which is the certainty we are getting. Uh, the, before we were importing the loan from, so importing the gold from uh, outside India, which takes a target time. But now we are getting this facility locally, which saves times and uh, the cost also in terms of threat rate. So the gold metal loan facility from banks that we are getting. And we repay within a month. That's all. Okay. So, so coming back again to the deposit, so where was it uh, in the March quarter? Because there has not been a significant increase uh, from your March numbers. So, just uh, trying to understand that. Yeah, it was. It was. It was with us in in, in couple of years with us. We had a long term deposit that we had it. We haven't redeemed that those deposits because we are not required. And uh, with the recent acquisition, it was required. So that's why we had revealed those deposits. Okay. And the last is uh, the 29 crores of CAPEX. Uh, what is this for, sir? So out of 29 crores, uh, 12 crores is related to the asset purchase agreement from Ideal World. And the uh, remaining is related to uh, the uh, intangible assets, which is the IT applications and upgradation of our software. Sure. Thank you. I'll come back in the queue for more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you the next question is from the line of Ritik Tulsian from Concept Investwell. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, you are. 
Yeah, hi sir. So my first question is: so if we see in the IP, so our own brand contribution is twenty nine percent of B two C, right? So if you can give any view on how we are doing in terms of customer retention and growth in the customer base for our own brand. So that is my first question. Yeah. So uh, again, we we have separate numbers uh, for a brand customer or non-brand customer yet. We haven't broken that down, but we are seeing that uh, a slight margin benefit to us in brands, and also we understand uh, this from uh, customers. Uh, the uh, brand uh, affinity when they develop, they stay longer. Uh, I'm not sure if we have data on that separately. Do we have data? Yeah, we don't have the data readily available. Okay, so I mean, uh, so if you can give any qualitative figures, like internally, how is it doing? Better than your expectations, or you think it can still, you know, get better if you have any internal expectations regarding your own brands? And how is that pan yeah, out? They're yeah, definitely uh, valuable to us because. Uh, that's why we've given a guidance of 50% of brand revenue by as far as we sell. We're getting benefit in terms of better margin and also customer affinity. So better lot of value. Uh, okay. And my next question is so like if we see TV growth has been quite muted this quarter as well. So like when do you expect it to get better? Like from uh, in the other the coming two quarters or you think? It can be, get better in FY25. Uh, if you have any, you know, the view on that. Yeah, so uh, the coming two quarters, it will be better because uh, we've given a guidance uh, and a higher guidance uh, as we've given eight to ten percent growth and it's like for light guidance for the financial year. We expect Q3 and Q4 to be better for television uh, as well as e-com, both of them. And next year, definitely. Um, noticeably better for a few okay. reasons. One is that we got some extra real time that we've taken in the US. And second thing, we expect the economy to stabilize, as I mentioned in my comments, that the US economy seems to be moving up and people are coming back to the normal life. And people went away quite aggressively for experiences last year, year and a half. And when they have had the fill of the experiences, they come back to normal life and spend at home or watching our programming on television or through streaming. Okay. And uh, do, we have, do we have any other M&A lined up or in the pipeline which we can expect, you know, to get closed in the coming two quarters if you have anything? No, no nothing in the face of this issue. Okay, okay. So la my last question is, uh, you have elaborated in your uh, investor presentation that we got benefit of 1.1% from logistic cost negotiation, right? So if you can elaborate a bit more on that, that how, what, what was it, if that is possible? Yeah, I'll take this. Uh, so we have around 1%, 1.1% benefit in the margin side from logistic side. Part A is related to the lower volume that we are getting, and part A is related to our operational efficiency in terms of clubbing the orders and negotiation with the carrier partners. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, and all the best for your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nilesh Shah from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Congratulations, Sunil, and the team on a steady quarter. Uh, Sunil, would be helpful if you can just some throw, uh, throw some light on the two acquisitions, uh, what's been our rationale behind these acquisitions, and uh, both a, a qualitative and a quantitative perspective in terms of what is it that we hope to achieve uh, through these two acquisitions in terms of synergies and how these acquisitions will um, accrue value to us. So if you can just kind of throw some light on that, please. Sure. Ideal World has a 21 year of uh, brand recognition in the UK market, much before we came on the scene. And we got phenomenal value uh, at a great price of 1.125 million whole brand and a customer list of 480,000 customers that we had. And uh, you know, we also got a channel position on the TV EPG with them. 
So it creates a, um, a big get uh, visibility into the consumer mind for very low value. And with our sourcing capabilities, uh, we expect this to become profitable within a year. Uh, so this will add the revenue as well as to the bottom line in coming years for us. The second brand, Mindful Souls, has two benefits. One is the digital learning, it's a digital native brand. We are TV slash e com company. And digital native brand is coming from a, a, a bit different angle, and we wanted that learning within the company. We, we are developing that learning as well, but getting that learning from outside will definitely help us. Second benefit that we had was a subscription business. So, on an average, that customer buys six and a half months. So whenever they enter a business, they continue to subscribe for six and a half months. This is assured uh, a new business in that uh, model. And we wanted to learn that entity because we don't have it yet. Third thing is, there's a uh, leverage of supply chain because the product that they were selling, we were already manufacturing or sourcing. So we can uh, um, use our uh, skill and leverage to better cost manage that. So it's already a 10% EBITDA business, and we expect that we can take that business to 14%, 15% EBITDA very quickly. Okay, great. Thanks. That's very helpful. Uh, my second question is around the margin. So from a peak of 15 16%, uh, we went all the way down to maybe 6 7%, and from there, the margins have witnessed a steady recovery to about 9%. Um, I'm just kind of trying to understand uh, that are there any kind of very visible low hanging fruits that we see uh, for the margins to kind of go from 9% to whatever the earlier highs of 15% or is that just going to be purely a function of scale that as we grow uh, at, at our guided rate the margins could go back to the earlier levels or are there any specific levers that we can see which will help us to kind of um, see further improvement in the margins apart from of course also the fact that Germany will um, you expect Germany to break even by H2 of FI25 so apart from Germany and scale are there any other levers that we currently see which will help us to kind of recover or claw back some of those margins yeah well, good question Milesh. as you rightly said Germany will be one of the majors because it's still uh, right now in a build up phase and is negative to the you know, our, our margin base. That will help. The scale will definitely help. As you as you've seen in the last few quarters, as we uh, scaled whatever the margin, whatever the revenue growth, the margin growth has been more than that. So this model is uh, beautifully modeled when it grows, and it can be uh, it fits adversely when it decrows. So as we expect the growth to continue, our margin will continue to be uh, leverage for us. Other than that, we continue to uh, look for a product line or uh, uh, within product uh, categories, any particular space that we find to be better margin, we continue to look for that. We also stay away from products that doesn't give margin. For example, there was a, a huge proposal came and there was a lot of discussion around selling gold bars. Uh, uh, like a small uh, one ounce gold bar, a 10 gram gold bar, there is a huge uh, uh, sales velocity by Costco or Walmart on the uh, gold bars. But that would have been a lower margin business, and we stay away from that. Because we stay with only 60% plus kind of product margins. So we constantly look at product uh, offering to us and category to us and look at the opportunities to expand the margin. So even uh, when we had uh, inventory uh, change uh, last two years, the consumer taste change, and we had to make the changes to inventory. We didn't need to go below 60% owing to our ability to uh, source competitively and be agile. And we'll continue to explore that and leverage that as the opportunity comes. Great. Great. Thank you so much, and best wishes. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pritesh Cheda from Lucky Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, 
so i have one question when i was looking at a presentation i couldn't find the customer count number can you share what is the customer count number now the active customer numbers which you give yeah hi pratesh uh, active customers are 450000 uh, telling 12 months 30, 30 september okay so now my associated question here is uh, the customer account number is what we are not seeing improvement uh from our pnl we landed up spending about 5 to 6% of our uh, ebitda margin uh, on first uh, buying more air time and second uh, spending on the digital uh, side uh, being omni present or omni channel and you know uh, we try to take up some customers uh any reason why we don't see those spend till translating into customer and how are we looking at this matrix how are we looking at improving the matrix on the customer count number uh, now this 450 also obviously includes germany i think uh, so if i recall uh, pre covid we were at about 350 360 then we went to a certain higher number and then that number curtailed down to a 450 number but this 450 number includes germany now so you know if you could spend some time on this part some time on uh the margins that we had used to acquire some air time some digital spend yet not transferring to customer uh, it would be very helpful so we need to go give some comments yeah sure because this is me so the customer count is the customer count is the factor in our business of the viewership overall uh, on television or even on the e-com So during uh, COVID, we had a good audience, captive audience, and our customer count was very, quite substantially high on the back of high audience. And after COVID, when economy opened up, people were hungry for experiences. People traveled quite uh, aggressively, and during that experience, uh, we lost that audience, uh, and therefore the customer count was lower than the previous year. Having said that. Uh, even after insuring Germany, our customer count for US and UK put together is higher than pre-COVID period. I don't have a number of me. Maybe you uh, can pull out and give it to me. That that number is noticeably higher than pre-COVID period, and we expect the numbers to come back to uh, normal numbers after the people settle back in their daily lives. We would also appreciate that our average price point went up. on the back of us offering a little bit higher price points uh, uh going to addressing the inflation uh addressing products and uh, as we see in long run we our average price point will come down volume will go up and the customer count will go up what you mentioned is a forecast uh, uh what are you what strategies have you changed to deliver that forecast and my other question was what uh, why are we not seeing uh, it still happening in the last two years despite spending 5 6% of our sale uh, margin and uh, spending on digital yeah so we take up uh, air time distribution whenever we get the opportunity we don't wait for that and we don't really uh, hold back our investments because these are very long term uh, relationships people build and whenever the opportunity comes we take it and uh, opportunity came to us and we took it in US and UK in last two years when they presented themselves and digital spend is constant uh, learning constant spending so we would do continue to do that but uh, again i reiterate compared to the 2020 uh, 20 compared to uh, 2019 2020 which was pre covid period our customer count is uh, noticeably high uh, after the call our team will take uh, out the number and share with you on a recurring payment basis i see it here the uk was on 15 q4 what is q3 number uh, how much is your germany count if you can tell in this 450 it is 4000 uh, hold on just let me check again Germany, which is under fifty-two thousand. How much? Fifty-two thousand. So, so which means that your, uh, which means that your UK and US number has moved from three fifty, three sixty to four hundred k, about forty uh, fifty thousand addition. 
but uh, Sunil, the amount that you have spent from the PNL is much higher. So all these customers have come really expensive. Are we yeah, looking at that? Yeah. So we look at all the affiliates that we do. We look at very closely uh, one month, three months, six months, nine months, 12, 15, and 18 months. So we have a criteria only in place if those markets don't work for us, we exit from those markets. And that churn constantly happens, a bit of a churn, not a whole lot, but that churn happens. So we are very careful about the how much we spend, where we spend. And on digital, the customer lifetime is shorter and the cost, cost is, uh, uh, cost per customer acquisition, different channels is, uh, uh, is in our visibility constantly. And we spend based on what the customer lifetime is worth for us. So we are quite careful about that. But we have to be cognizant of how the economic macro conditions are and what is the average price point we are currently giving. Uh, as you would appreciate, with 400,000 customers in UK and US, our ASP is noticeably higher compared to pre-COVID period. Therefore, the revenue growth compared to pre-COVID period. Are you going to relook at some of these spends? Because one of the one of the previous participants who asked on margin lever, you said growth is the only margin lever, uh, which means you're not going to relook at these spends. Uh, uh, is that interpretation that I have to do? Or what is the change in incremental strategy that you want to deploy for your forecast of customer count to go up? Yeah, we, uh, we don't do a forecast of customer count or we don't do guidance to customer count because the business so directionally, is so dynamic. Directionally you mentioned, right? Incrementally you see customer count going up, volumes going yeah, up, pricing yeah. coming down. Yeah. yeah. Business is so dynamic. So we uh, look at overall uh, ASP, a balance between ASP and the customer count, customer new customer acquisition, and average uh, total unique customers and our average selling price and the total revenue growth. And totally margin goes. There are multiple variables we look at on a very uh, regular basis, on a daily, weekly basis. And uh, we, uh, are we fully expect to meet our guidance of 13 to 15 percent growth this financial year and of uh, high teens the next financial year? Okay. Uh, so uh, on the margin side, we will not see any cutting down of any cost, right? It's just pure sales mm -hmm. growth which brings in everything. If we look at the costs on a weekly basis, in fact, I am involved in the weekly basis of this affiliate uh, cost structure. And we look at the numbers, we look at very minutely what market is working, where we need to get out, where we need to uh, double down. It's a constant process and weekly process. So wherever we can come out and uh, get the better cost, we get the better cost. There can't be guidance on that. We will cut so much percentage of the real time cost. They cannot do any guidance on that. Okay. And uh, when you said 13% growth for FY24, uh, this includes these acquisitions, right? Yes. So without acquisition, it will be 8 to 10. With acquisition, it will be 13 to 15% growth. So you have moved up your number from 6 to 8 to 8 to 10 now, right? That's how it is. That we moved last quarter, only last couple of quarters ago. So 8 to 10 for this financial year without acquisition. With acquisition, it's 13 to 15 percent with financial year. And next year also, it is uh, high teens, right? Next year, high teens with beverage. Okay, okay. I'll come back if there are more questions, please. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohan Mehta. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. I. Uh, First off, wanted to ask your opinion on uh, what the impact of this uh, geopolitical tension in uh, in and around Israel is likely to be on our operations since we are spread across various geographies. Has there been any noticeable change in consumer sentiment or any other impact that you may foresee of this? So far, we haven't seen impact on the business at all. Uh, I can I can understand the impact on the people psyche and. People's uh, dissonance and uh, instability, I understand that. And uh, I feel for the people who have suffered. But from a business point of view, we haven't seen any impact so far. 
So in terms of discretionary spending, it uh, it's not likely to impact our target demographic, is it? So far, it hasn't. I mean, yes, the corporate widens to uh, wider Middle East or wider that area. Uh, uh, so far, we haven't seen. And we have not taken that into account in our forecast because that is so you know uh, unpredictable, and uh, we can't really get that into the uh, the current. If the conflict uh, if they are, uh, the, is constrained within Palestine and Israel, then I don't see it impacting us. But if it gets gets a wider conflict, it may, but very difficult. Fair enough, sir. And sir, uh, in terms of diamond prices uh, uh, having gone down, is that a potential uh, risk for us? No, not really. Uh, I personally, I think diamond prices going down is a temporary phenomenon. Uh, happened with the confluence of a few factors. And I believe the diamond prices would come back up uh, in, uh, in, in the future. But uh, uh, we are not diamond centric business anyways. We are uh, so much colored gemstone or plain metal or non jewelry. Diamond is a very small portion of our business, so that is not the really incident. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it would not really affect our average uh, ASP that much. No, it would not. And so in Germany, uh, you know, regarding our uh, uh, tie-up with Telecolumbus, so uh, what kind of investment uh, did we incur to, you know, acquire these uh, two million odd households that we have? Yeah, we acquired 13 million uh, HD homes on Vodafone and two million on. Telecolumbus. So we acquired right. 15 million homes uh, in this month. Uh, we just acquired early October, late September. So these two homes, uh, this, uh, we can't disclose the amount because it's uh, MBS is signed by MBA. But uh, that pushed our profitability from H1, H2 of current financial year to H2 of next financial year. Because it takes about uh, one year to 18 months for a household to mature. Mature. Okay. So, so do we plan any further investments in Germany? Germany we are 95% covered, so there is no need right. further. There will be very small incremental homes that we may acquire in Germany or in Austria. So not much spend. So our guidance of next financial year break even. H2 of next financial year break even. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. So also in terms of the targets that uh, have been sort of given in the mid to high teens uh, for the FI25, uh, what what would be if you were to say two or three key uh, triggers to uh, spur the growth, uh, you know, to based to justify this projection? What would those be triggers? Yeah. So number one thing is uh, a higher revenue per home that we already address. Uh, number two, I'm uh, I'm seeing U.S. economy uh, uh, improving. So with the customer coming back to their normal lives we would see some growth coming back in. And also our merchandising learning that we are doing with the branding that we are improving, uh, LS2 improvement happening with our uh, uh, per home, per reach that we have, the right position of customers for marketing, and, and, and hopefully with better uh, repeat purchase from the customer from the same household that we acquired, from the same customer that we acquired. So four hours that we focus on, reach, retention, reach, reach registration, and retention and repeat are our drivers of business. Okay. So, sir, uh, interest rate pressure is not right now uh, impacting us in the U.S.? Not very much. Our price points are not very high. So I'm not seeing so much. Earlier, I was skeptical of U.S. falling into recession. And uh, UK also falling in recession. But that kind of uh, recession worries are now on a bad burner. So that makes me feel comfortable in giving the guidance. Got it, got it. So, just one last question. Uh, do you look at uh, uh, the digital route to acquire customers separately and whether there is a dedicated strategy for that versus uh, uh, non digital uh, methods? Yeah, so we have uh, three ways to acquire, at least four ways to acquire customers. Number one is predominantly television. 
number two is digital that we do paid media to services book affiliate and influencers and number three is marketplace that we sell on uh, amazon uh, walmart and ebay and number four is ott ott is a part of digital but still as a separate strategy that is through roku and rtv and Apple tv and all the other uh, uh, fast platforms fast is free i support it uh in and to also through app platform app environment so all these four have our uh, people in charge of them and respective locations and have their own budgets and strategies okay. so digital would not be any more focused upon uh, compared to the other two okay yeah, so there are uh, separate teams for digital and they have their own budgets and targets okay. to go after market number of customers revenue from the customer retention rate and lifetime value and the, uh, and the CAC. So they have their own targets. Yeah. Understood. Understood. Thank, thank you so much for answering my question. So all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nihar Mehta. Please go ahead. Uh, in terms of digital channels, uh, are you in any steps like how are you planning to increase your digital presence talking in relation to BTC money that we have from the books? And you are not very clear, Nihar. Can you repeat your question? I heard something about digital, but it was broken. Sure. Are you planning to, uh, how are we planning to, you know, increase our digital presence? I'm thinking this with a question to the uh, of this human revenue from business, digital health. So, are we taking steps to increase it further? Yeah, if I understood your question correctly, you're asking what are we doing to uh, capitalize or penetrate digital further? Is it correct? Right, right. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah. The answer to Rohan's question, so we have separate teams for digital, uh, paid digital. So uh, digital also has uh, separate teams within digital. One is the uh, customer, digital sales to the customer that we acquire from television, and uh, other division is for paid uh, uh, acquisitions. So for within paid, we have Facebook teams, we have Google teams, we have affiliate teams, and we have influencer teams. So uh, we have uh, attention to grow uh, all paid channels as well as organic. So we also have SEO team to improve our SEO footprint for all the donors that we have US, UK, Germany. And we uh, capitalize on whatever we can get organically. Yes, so there's a lot of attention in giving uh, up the trade profitably. Profitably in the sense that we must acquire a customer as Half or one third of lifetime value, or really one year lifetime value of a customer. Earlier, we used to do two year lifetime value. We have now brought it down to one year lifetime value. So, we must acquire a customer at half to one third of the lifetime value of that customer. And different product categories have different lifetime values. Junior has a high lifetime value, LST has a lower lifetime value, but the customer acquisition cost in, in the lifestyle life product is lower, and the acquisition cost is higher. Yeah, so we have a strategy in place to accelerate in that area, but given the guard rail of a certain percentage of lifetime value. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Supan Parikh. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, good evening. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Yeah, hi. So, my question will be like uh, you mentioned a target of 13 to 15 percent revenue growth for SI Select Force. So, like, can you elaborate on the specific strategies of the market that will have this growth? Can you repeat the first question again? Yeah, I just mentioned the you have you mentioned that your target for this FI24 is starting to 15% revenue. 
so can you elaborate like how are you how are you going to achieve this growth like are any specific strategy for the market that will drive this particular growth yes upon as i mentioned earlier in har and rohan's question we have marketing teams in place for our television for ecom for ott for market places and there are a lot of uh, a uh, driver for growth the product the marketing the message the content and uh, getting the new product in getting the existing product to be successful higher uh, or uh, uh, scale up the existing product so there are a lot of different marketing strategies for multiple channels that we have in place in us uk and germany so we have multiple uh, growth drivers available to us but uh, from broad category you can say four r's are there one is the reach then next is registration third is uh, retention of the customer fourth is improving the repeat purchase of the customer and within the four r there are multiple sub segments that is a pd digital marketplace and ott okay uh, now i saw like to Uh, ask uh, how confident are you in achieving fighting growth by by to be fight really confident i would i'm generally as I, i tend to be conservative although uh, mm-hmm. post covid uh, we were kind of taken off guard when people went out and we could not meet our guidelines but other than that uh, i take pride in that we met our guidelines or exceeded our guidelines largely Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask questions may press star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, as there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to Ms. Sunil Agarwal for closing comments. Uh, thank you, Abhijit. So I want to thank all the participants for your time and great questions. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to Prashant Sarswat at VGL or Amit Sharma at Ad Factors PR India, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you once again. On behalf of Weber Global Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.